Hey, I'm Blake with New Canoe and welcome back to a New Canoe Custom Setup of the Week. Today we're deviating just a little bit from the normal format and we're going to look at the pivot drive setups. Both on the Flint and Frontier 12, we're going to walk through accessorizing, outfitting, rigging uh, these kayaks when the pivot drive is installed. It's a very popular question on the pivot drive video we released a couple weeks ago. You know, what about rod holders? What about black packs? Where's my gear going to go? So today we're going to cover that. Now last week we got on the water, thankfully we did, because today it's snowing outside. We don't always get snow here in Bellingham, but today it's all white. So glad we got the on the water portion done last week. Today we're just going to walk through these boats, kind of show you how you can set it up, what items are going to be compatible from new canoe accessories, and also uh, look at what other things we could uh, you know, bring out that would allow you to have all the gear management, gear storage, and outfitting solutions that you need on your kayak when you're using the pivot drive. All right, first up, we're going to walk through the flint. So starting at the bow, you know, the bow handle, rod tip holders are unaffected by the pivot drive. You can still have two rods um, horizontal. On the left side, it gets a little bit trickier with that steering handle, so probably better off to really focus on having one rod um, on the horizontal rod holders opposite the steering handle. Hog trough channel, couldn't cover that up. That still works. There's a cutout in the, the pivot base so that that hog trough still works. And... Um, and then we just got the accessory tracks here that are largely utilized by the pivot drive. So the current uh, dashboard and console will not fit with this, but we'll be able to come out with something that utilizes this space to provide a mounting solution. So if you want your rod holders, your fish finder display, anything like that stored up in front of you, there is space. There's, we'll be able to tie that into the base so you can utilize this area um, for mounting additional gear up in front of the pivot tower. Working our way back, you can see the, the deck space is not uh, affected at all. Still have your, uh, your tackle pockets on each side that are fully functional. And standing wise, you know, the, the pivot drive cable is right to the edge. It's off the floor just a little bit. So you'll be able to tuck your foot right into that, put, put your foot right up to where that is. Really won't get in the way or affect your standing area uh, when you want to stand up with the pivot drive installed. So now the Flint comes with the, uh, the custom height pinnacle seat, so you'll be able to dial that seat height in relative to the pedal towers, relative to your center of gravity to get the ideal fit for you. Uh, it won't be able to use 360 uh, seating on the Flint. You can see the uh, steering handle is right next to the seat. That would be conflict there. So uh, with this design, those two, uh, the 360 seating wouldn't be uh, an option on the Flint. Uh, next up, rod storage. So we got the rod holder, horizontal rod holder up front. We also have the, uh, the four flush mount rod holders in the back. And you can see that uh, the cable runs, uh, the flex drive cable runs kind of right through these, so it's not going to stop you from using them. You can definitely put uh, two rods on the outside, just like that. <clears throat> Same thing on the other side where you got the retract cord, kind of cuts through that area, but is not going to, uh, um, you know, limit you from using those flush rod holders. Crate space area, you can see the black pack still fits fine. The, uh, the steering cable, the flex drive cable go along one side of it, the retract cable on the other, so you can definitely still use a black pack, put a milk crate back here, a cooler, anything else like that. And the access to the deck plate is still uh, unimpeded. Uh, of course, a little bit tricky to get that when you're in the boat, but it's not going to prevent you from using it. So that's a wrap on the Flint and some of the outfitting options. You can see there's still a lot of deck space there, a lot of places to secure your gear. Um, I didn't even mention the deck floor tracks behind the seat. You know, if you want to stick an Omega Pro rod holder back there or on the tracks in front of you, um, there's still lots of other areas to mount gear and preserve your clean open deck. All right, now we're going to jump over to the Frontier 12. And the first thing you'll probably notice is there's still a ton of space for gear on the Frontier 12. And that's true with the, uh, with the larger deck, wider deck, you still have really uh, just about all the options for, for mounting and accessorizing on the Frontier 12. So the bow handle, rod tip holder is still going to work fine, not going to be inter, uh, impeded by the pivot drive at all. The front tracks are going to work great for the dashboard. You can see here, I mean, a big uh, Lowrance unit sits right behind the pedals. This is a really nice setup to have the dashboard with the pivot drive. Now the console is a pretty tight fit. It could be made to fit. It might fit in the end, but in reality, you're losing your access to the, to the um, kind of the, the space underneath. So it's not as practical for use with the pivot drive. So the dashboard would really be the ideal solution or just using the eight inch tracks that are already built into the Frontier 12 to mount your, uh, your switch blade and your um, fish finder and rod holders and such. So working our way back, we have the wide open deck. And again, with the uh, pedals forward, you see you can still go all the way there, just get the pedals oriented right. And you'll be able to push pedals forward, be able to use your fish finder display on the dashboard 
and have a nice wide open area on the deck floor for standing, measuring your fish and such. On the seat, 360 pinnacle seat. So an ideal setup with the pivot drive would be to have the locking swivel on here so you can lock yourself out when you're pedaling and then when you get to where you want to be you can rotate. And with the, uh, with the locking swivel you'll be able to have uh, 360 mobility on the frontier with the pivot drive set up. Working our way back, see we have a couple Omega Pro rod holders in the track, 70 inch track on the Frontier 12, lots of space um, behind the seat to mount additional devices. We've seen some people put a dashboard back here if you have quite a few rods and other things you'd like to mount. But just the, uh, the, the Omega Pros in the track work great. And then at the stern end on the crate space, the black pack fits in nicely. Cables go right around it, uh, steering cable and flex drive on one side, the retract cable on the other. So you're really uh, you know, able to use the black pack without any uh, hindrances. Then the three rod tubes there are going to be great for rod storage. Having them up in the air is not going to affect the pivot drive at all. Uh, finally, with that pivot drive transom bracket, it's, uh, it's best to leave that installed unless you really need to take it all off. So I would not plan to use the new canoe transport cart that plugs into that transom for transportation on any of the uh, models with the pivot drive, but rather a center cart such as the C-Tug. Then you can leave everything installed, have the additional weight of the pivot drive, which is in the low 20s uh, pound range um, on that cart, keep everything installed and have minimal to take on and take off between uses. So we'll continue to have updates on the pivot drive coming out, you know, covering uh, just on the water use, uh, setting them up for fishing, you know, assembly, disassembly, transportation, all that stuff. So just stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of content cranking out over the next few months here. And these, uh, these pivot drives here that you've seen in this video, these are going to be uh, on a plane to Florida real soon. They're going to join up some of our team guys down in the Keys uh, for some uh, product testing photos, videos down there, and then work their way back up north. So you're going to start seeing these pivot drives on the water, real world conditions in a lot of different places. That's all for here. We hope you enjoyed this uh, edition of New Canoe Customs Setup of the Week. Tune back in next week for another setup.